in defense of Berlin. Uh, this is a short video reply which I speak to the esteemed colleague Red Pill Germany who does a great job uh, enlightening our non-German speaking unenlightened world masses about the situation in Germany. No, really, it's a wonder. It's a channel I love to to follow. Though most of it is not so surprising to 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 Germans. Some is, but it does a great job to to really inform people uh, abroad, as the Englishmen would say, um, about the situation in Germany. However, there is something I have to make a rep reply with some questions and some doubts. He made his video with the title How did Berlin become so leftist? Now, there are a few things to say. First, uh, one question that is, he made, makes initially the comparison why would Berlin be economically so bad as compared to the thriving cities of London and Paris? So there are two questions, which are honest questions, not rhetorical questions. Questions in the sense, I do not know. And I would wish Red Pill Germany to tell me, did he dig into the numbers? Because I tried this for the last 15 minutes and then I, I'm not an economist. I hate economy, I hate mathematics. So I say, okay, I as the listener just ask the question, on what numbers is it based? I mean... What is the number basis? That is, of course, there are two kinds of, of uh, economic pools. First is, of course, the public pool. So how much is Berlin in debt still? Is it still? Is it making red numbers or black numbers, as we say? So is the trend upward or downward? And then compared to Paris and London. Is London in debt? Is Paris in debt? Is Paris, as a purely speaking now, first of the public sector? Are the public sectors in London and Paris really better? I mean, comparing them to their size, the number of people, of course, also. So you would have to use it per capita, per person, so to make an, a realistic estimation of the numbers. Did you read numbers about this? If so, I would be not trying to be uh, uh, nagging around, but it's really something that is because I have the impression sometimes, I'm not saying, dear Red Pill, that you do this, that sometimes we say things we have heard from hearsay and they may have been so at some point, 20, 30, whenever years ago. And the question is, is it still the case today? I have doubts it is, but if it is so, I say, okay, it is so. The second is, of course, the public sector. In the public, uh, in the private sector, sorry. In the, pri in the private sector, it is way, way, way more complicated. For instance, Berlin was for the longest part not the capital of Berlin. And during I live in West Berlin, now United Berlin, since 1978, when I was seven, plus minus minus one year. Uh, so for a very long time, I've seen divided Berlin for a very long time, West Berlin. And what I know is that what some foreigners may not so, so well know. Germany is a federal country, similar to the United States. We have federal states which have great independence and like federal states do, our federal states are in competition with one another. Unlike, for instance, in France, which is a central state where there are not regions in that, in that sense that there, each region has a, its own prime minister, and they are in competition with each other, which is the case in Germany. It has been the case in West Germany before reunification, and it is the case in unified Germany as well. 
and that led to the bitter reality that many other states of Germany purposefully lured away industry into their countries. For instance, in the oh, I think the 70s or 80s, I'm not sure which which decade. I suppose it started in the 70s. It was under the Bavarian Prime Minister Franz Josef Strauss. There was a great section of the great industry of Siemens in Berlin. And he essentially bribed Siemens with anything but legal means to remove large parts of their industry away from West Berlin into Bavaria. By, by offering them special tax evasion possibilities. So in a gray zone, I assume. So Bavaria took away much industry with such nefarious uh, ways, which Berlin simply could not pay or allow them such low uh, tax-free havens as Franz Josef Strauss in Bavaria. And so it was the case with other states in Germany who did great damage to the industry sectors. And it was a strong industry sector since Berlin, once the capital of Prussia, had generated large factories and sectors of industry because, as foreigners may not know, Berlin has only relatively lately united, in I think in 1920, into that large united city that it is now. The space of Berlin before 1920 was considerably smaller and all the towns lying around were incorporated into it. So there was much land between and as other cities have the industry usually before the doorsteps of the city, so had old time Berlin too. But then after the unification of 1920 into great so-called Great Berlin, much of that was once outside Berlin, then after 1920 was inside Berlin, like the huge Siemens area. And as you can imagine, if there is one industry, it attracts more. And if, as Bavaria nefariously did, you pull away this industry, well, others follow just the same. So there is a nefarious internal struggle between the states, a rivalry competition to which a city-state rarely can compete because the income of city-states is always much longer, slower. They do not have large areas like a large state like Bavaria, so-called Flächenstaaten, that means states with large open plains and open spaces can offer cheap land, which a city-state just can not offer. These and other things were damaging the economy of Berlin considerably uh, in the time after the war. And is no fault of the of of the city. The second is why does Red Pill Germany only cite London and Paris? Why do we not compare ourselves with other capitals? How about Rome? How about the Spanish capital of Madrid, or the Portuguese capital of Lisbon, or? Capitals in the East, okay, you can say that's probably not an entirely fair comparison since they just emerged from decades of communist oppression. But still, maybe, what is what? how is it with Prague, with Warsaw? Okay, but I agree it may not be entirely fair because they had it uh, bad for a long time. So, But we have other Western capitals, Copenhagen, Oslo. Athens. So why should we compare Berlin to London and and, and, and Paris? I mean, by by size in, 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 in matters of square kilometers, square miles in, in area, Berlin is a large city, but in number of citizens with 3.8 million, it is not such a large city. So why not compare it to cities of more relative size, like, for instance, Rome, 
the capital of the empire, formerly. I think compared to many such other capital cities, Berlin would not look so bad. But then is, of course, the question of Berlin is dirty and Berlin is a multi culty den of chaos and anarchy. And then the question again is, which of these cities today in the Western civilization is not? I think we can broaden our horizon to the United States and, oh boy. So the question is, why is Portland so leftist? Why is Seattle so leftist? Why is, I don't know, so many cities, Los Angeles so leftist? Why is San Francisco so leftist? Why is Detroit so leftist? And of course, the truth is that all these leftist cities have wrecked havoc to the life quality of their cities. That is true. It is true. We are united in the idea that leftists should not govern. To that, Red Pill and me probably fully and entirely agree. But the question is still why highlight Berlin in something which I more see is a general trend that people in cities, for reasons we could go at length into sociological inquiries, prefer to road vote for leftist parties. I think the reason is more that people in cities generally do that. And I suppose all data from Britain, from France, from America, from Germany, from wherever you go, tendentially will support this. In Western cities, in Western countries, the situation in Eastern countries, because of their intimate experience with socialism, will of course be different. There will certainly be some exceptions, but as a general rule, I think the trend will be much certain that large cities always tend to vote a variant of leftist parties. And uh, by the way, this was in Berlin always also the case long before, for instance, the Nazi party came. And uh, just as a historical side note, uh, before uh, 1933, uh, Berlin was usually known in the Weimar Republic in Germany in the time as the Red City, Red Berlin. So it is not by any stretch new like Antifa brought it or uh, it came to Berlin after the uh, divided Berlin. No, no, uh, that is something that dates very much more back. And it was that because the Nazis had the greatest difficulties. No, 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 no. Don't give into the Hufeisen theory, into the, what is the German word for it? Damnation. The, the idea that left and right are so similar that it is easy and it is almost the same. So, no, no, no. The Nazis sent their best then agitator, Mr. Goebbels himself, to Berlin. And the diaries of Goebbels show that he saw this as a huge challenge. He, Goebbels, who had written dies, said it was the most difficult place to be a Nazi, the most difficult place to try to convert people to our side, was Berlin, because Berlin was a red leftist city. So if leftism and Nazism would be so similar, then why should Goebbels rise out? It will be the most difficult place to, to, to find people to convert. So just as a side note against this, fuck it, what is the English word for Hufeisen? I have to look it up. Is this even a theory in, in English? I have so far heard it only in, in German now. Where is a translation program when you quickly need one and you could, of course, Break it up and make it continue. And then horseshoe. Ah, yes, horseshoe. That is a strange, strange name. Horseshoe. Hoof eisen means hoof iron, which it essentially is. But a horseshoe, it's not a shoe. Sometimes the English language is so silly. But that aside, uh, horseshoe theory. That is like the theory that like left and right are so similar that they meet, which is 
there are some points which it sounds plausible, but, but by and large, I am not a friend of the theory. It simplifies a complicated matter. And again, so did I forget something? And f largely, the economic situation of all great cities is bad. Maybe not all city great cities, but of an overwhelming percentage of big cities is bad. Because what kind of industry can a big city make money from? Tourism, okay, maybe, but how many cities can do that? And then in Corona times, of course, tourism, many a uh, great city has almost become bankrupt due to the Corona measures. Because there is so little tourism and so little chance to, to go around into a cafe to spend time so it's more like the service sector the entire service sector suffers the most and that hits the big cities of course especially and so big cities have i mean there are there is one sector which a big city can muster independent of that and that is a financial district but uh, and london is a financial center but then the que it is it is quite a questionable thing to say oh should we become a financial capitalist uh, 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 moneylender town like london just to be good in terms of economic data as someone who is not a friend of our moneylenders uh, i have a greatest doubt if that is something that i personally would find a very moral thing to do you might argue it pays the rent, but then the question is how much does the average Londoner have from some very rich speculators of the London banking system? And looking at London, it is a deeply divided city in a center which no one but millionaires can afford and a fringe which utterly goes down the gutter. So this great division, this great gentrification in a way that you have two Londons, the centre which belongs to the international millionaires and the not centre which belongs to the drags. And I wonder if that is a better solution where in Berlin, despite gentrification being here as well, Berlin is still a very mixed and open city. There is no such strong level of gentrification as is the case in London. I don't know about Paris. I have no knowledge about this. I assume to some degree it will be in Paris. And we have those horrible areas then at the outskirts of Paris, the banlieues. So is that really so much better than Berlin, which with all the trouble we have here, all the migration which is plaguing us, all the poverty which is plaguing us, Berlin is still, I believe, a more livable city than London and Paris. It's, it's just more a feeling. And I would want data, facts. If Red Pill has facts here more than his own feelings against my own feelings. I mean, I at least can say I live in Berlin for, 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 for decades. So it's a lived experience. Though just anecdotal, of course. And Berlin was regularly voted in, 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 in the first 10 places in, in life quality in the last few years. So apparently a lot of people living in Berlin like living in Berlin. You may say, oh, they've loved the dirt and they've loved the drug dealers. And I don't know about anything about this. But that's, I just want to say, I know it has become fashionable to do Berlin bashing especially in patriot circles. And they do city bashing because they all have this strange dream of all living a rural life, which would be an entirely different debate because I think that is not so idyllic and perfect as some people believe it. Those are my few, I suppose I spoke already longer than I thought, yeah, 20 minutes. It's already longer than his own video. Sorry for that. These are my remarks, comments, and questions which I have to Red Pill Germany, especially on the data front, I would like to be really honestly curious without being nasty. It's, it's just honest curiosity if the data actually covers it 
negative view on Berlin? Or is Berlin not, and did it not become leftist like any other or almost any other huge city in the Western sphere? Though it is, of course, in a way, in some way, has its unique way. Antifa was invented in West Berlin. I, I was there in the 1980s when that happened, so to speak. But beyond that, it has a. It is like like like. Where is it not the case that that big cities are are left? Anyway, with these questions and comments, doing a little bit of defense of my beloved hometown Berlin, despite all the negative sides, I conclude this video. And I would be very interested in 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 some data. Red pill, you don't have to reply to this video. You don't feel like, but I would be curious. If there was data supporting your claims. Thank you all for listening and uh, I hope you enjoy the upcoming weekend.